Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and call to order this meeting of the Arts Commission, Monday, June 6, 2022, at 5 p.m. All right, I will call roll, and when you hear your name, just say present. Uh, Commissioner Corella Schmidt? Present. Commissioner Valenzuela? Present. Commissioner Redlitz? Present. Commissioner Abraham? Present. Commissioner Lees? Present. Commissioner Hebert? Present. And Commissioner Dilley? All right, let the record show all commissioners are present except Commissioner Dilley. Can you all see my screen? Do you see a flag? Yeah. Yes. Okay, we can That's sample nice. the pledge. That's very nice. And begin. I pledge to the flag, the flag. The United, United States, States of America. America. And, and the republic, republic for which it stands, for which it stands, it stands one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice and for, all. All. for all. Okay. That would be the pledge. And we're on to item four, special presentations and proclamations, of which we have none. Are there any oral communications today? We have none. Okay, and I believe there are no changes to the agenda that I've been made aware to. Correct. So, moving on then uh, to the approval of the minutes from May 2nd regular meeting. I reviewed the minutes and uh, can move to approve them. I can second that. I read them as well. And just for clarification, since we are doing this via Zoom and there's a couple different things that um, are going on behind the scenes, it would you um, motion to pass and second something if you could say your name. Just so Commission, for the Commissioner Lees, I move to approve the minutes. Thanks. And yeah, Commissioner Hebert, um, I second that motion. Great. Thank you. All right. So we'll take roll orally or the vote orally on this. Um, if you're in favor of approving the minutes from May 2nd, say aye. Commissioner Corrales Schmidt? Aye. Commissioner Valenzuela? Aye. Commissioner Redlitz? Aye. Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Lees? Aye. Commissioner Hebert? Aye. And uh, I think Commissioner Dilley is still absent. So let the record show it passes um, unanimously with Commissioner Dilling being absent. Okay. After approval of the minutes, we have action items. 8A Pacific View Programming Committee recommended action select three arts commissioners to serve on a Pacific View Programming Committee. Okay. Question. <clears throat> Um, when I read that, I wasn't sure if it was distinctly uh, members only from the Arts Commission or is that a broader committee it is a, uh, it will be a, staffed by other commissions? A, a broader committee, not necessarily other commissions, but city staff will be on it as well as other members of the community. But there will be three members of the Arts Commission invited can't exceed three so that we're in compliance with the Brown Act. Right. Mm. How many total uh, members do you project will be on the committee? I do not have that total available. I know it will not be very big. So that we can try and be efficient. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I, I have a, I was reading this and I read it a couple of times. Or strategic plan organizational effectiveness and efficiency focusy area of the strategic plan that, so that right that's is, is that to, is that government background. speak or something a little bit so basically we're looking for um, what this committee will work on 
is ideas and brainstorming for uses that fit within that existing permitting. If you were at one of the council meetings when, mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember who it was that presented it, but went through what Pacific View is zoned for and there was a list of, these are yes. all of the permitted uses. Yeah. And so we're gonna be looking at programming suggestions that fall completely within that nothing with nothing that would require minor use certainly nothing that require major permit just only what would fit within that and obviously all of that would be brought back forth to this committee when it happens so right. this is an opportunity for the commission to select three members to be on this group to participate in this committee Okay, well, I would like to volunteer to be on it. I've been promoting Pacific View since it became an issue with this with the uh, school district. So I would like to like I'm to sorry. be you. I, I, okay, sorry. I was going to formally nominate Michael, but if he's going to volunteer, go <laughs> ahead. Cool. I'll go. I'll take a nomination. I just wanted to put it out there that I'm I'm down. Okay. <laughs> I want to be on this. Yeah. All right, so I have Kathleen yeah. and Michael so far. I'm also interested, this is Navardo, in uh, joining the committee. All right, so I have three. Are there any other commissioners who are interested? Colette, I had a question. Um, so obviously we're sort of early in the in this process, although the not early in the saga of Pacific View, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but do you know when this committee will start meeting? And also, um, I would imagine that since it's going to be a while before things are actually happening there, is this ad hoc likely to turn over with each work plan or each year? I'm wondering, I guess I'm wondering, first of all, when these meetings start, and then secondly, if there will be further opportunities to join this committee, you know, down the road. I know not everything's predictable, obviously. But. Sure, so uh, part one, I can say, we are looking to hold the first meeting relatively quickly in the next couple of weeks, I believe. So there is not a date that's been been set for it yet. Okay. But um, Pacific View does seem to be on track. The projected date for completion is summer 2024. So there's a lot of things that need to happen ahead of that and, and in parallel with one another. And so certainly programming and, and ideas for programming is, is one of those things. So second part of your question, will there be other opportunities from a commissioner's perspective? Um, I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I can't good. necessarily tell you what those are or when they will happen. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, this project is still in the city manager's office. So we're not going to be you know putting everything in in ink this is the programming this is step one so certainly the the three commissioners who are on this group will be able to come back and and report to the full commission what what happened so there's always conversational you know within that reporting that can happen but i i think there's going to be a lot of you know, it's it's a long it's a long game. Right, right. I've been, okay. I've been as I said, I've been attending these meetings for years now. I mean, probably like twelve or thirteen years now. And there has always been a question what will fit, what doesn't fit zoning. So sure. we are we are finally at a point where we're saying, How about this? and we'll get a straight answer because somebody now it makes sense for the city or and the attorneys to take a look at exactly what is in the zoning, what's allowed by the state, what you know was allowed 10 years ago is possibly not still allowed today. So well, yeah, and it's very be getting some firm answers about what is allowed and what isn't. Sure. So I can't I can't see all of that being completely resolved in one year. Because also as we get into developing the school and they start deciding exactly what the uses are for the rooms that that's going to require further decision making down the road so right I, and that's and that's a much more macro wrap conversation. up in one year 
Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This yeah. is almost like visioning at this point. Right. This is this is much much this higher is, level. This, this, this conversation. Is, yeah. This is visioning sure. with with a layer of reality. With a heavy <laughs> dose of reality. Yes. Yes. Sure. Almost good. If I could just chime in here real quickly. Um, this is Director Carlin. Just one other thing I just want to just put out there is, yes, it is a long road before we the facility. The vision of the department is that we are moving ready. So we really need to start determining what that programming looks like, because right now we do have a community center that we can get some of the programming started at, so that way we can move those programs over to the central way of um, your volume is coming across re with a lot of um, a lot yeah. of robot in it. <laughs> Something, some distortions going on there. Close down, come back in. Um, this is Irene Abraham, and uh, Colette is in the next one. I can't quite hear no. you, Irene. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I was going to say I'd be happy to add to the committee if you ever need uh, extra people or somebody can't come. So if I heard you correctly, you're offering to be like the um, the standby, the alter yeah. right? Because you said you can't have more than three people on. Correct. Right. Can okay. I'd be, I'd be happy to do that. Yes, much better, Travis. Okay. Did you guys catch what I was saying? Did the commissioners understand what I was yes. saying? Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. It just sounded funny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure expectations are in place that we're not looking at choosing this program for this room or anything like that. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, circling back to my question, I am um, certainly interested in um, being part of the processes, particularly when it comes to talking about performing arts and what what role they might play there. But um, that's certainly something that will be, I'm sure, part of an ongoing conversation. So I'm happy to defer to the people have expressed being part of this already and and uh, I'll look to uh, uh, you know ideally join in down the line okay thank you so if I heard correctly we have Kathleen Michael and Navardo as the three commissioners with Irene as the alternate that would be correct excellent thank you do we need to vote on that yes So is there a motion? Um, I'll move that uh, we nominate, that we appoint Michael, Kathleen, and Navardo with Irene as the alternate to serve with the city on um, what they are calling organizational effectiveness and efficiency focus area. The Pacific View Programming <laughs> Committee. Oh, OK. <laughs> this is Jeff Redlitz. I'll second the motion. All right. So I'll call your name. If you're in favor, say aye. Uh, Commissioner Corella Schmidt. Aye. Mr. Valenzuela. Aye. Commissioner Redlitz. Aye. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Lees. Aye. Commissioner Aver. Aye. All right. Let the record show it passes six to zero with Commissioner Dilley being absent. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Um, mm -hmm. Action item 8A is complete. We're on, moving on to 8B, which would be Commission for the Arts Annual Work Plan, recommended action to review the work plan and report on progress. <clears throat> All right. Will we be taking a close look at each item today or kind of jumping through quickly? I think that it, the recommendation would be that any items that there is information to report on would be the ones we definitely don't need to go read. We don't need to go line by line. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see for appointments. Um, we'll, we'll probably have to add the, this Pacific View Committee onto appointments now. No? Or where no. would that go? No, so for now it is not part of your work plan. It is a separate okay. item, so no. Okay. Um, all right. I don't. I don't know that there's anything new with appointments. Um, I noticed that uh, that uh, Valenzuela is not. Uh, we said appoint one commissioner to serve on the Encinitas Community Grant Program, and he's already done that. 
but his name isn't there. Right here. I see it there. I don't know if you can oh. see my, my cursor. Oh, I'm moving. sorry. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Was, okay. I see you now. They don't. I think they I don't. did that last week too. That's okay. Last month. Okay. Now moving on to arts advocacy. Assist Encinitas Friends of the Arts with fundraising activities and programs. Um, I can report that I've kind of done a little bit of behind the scene, scenes work trying to get the word out on some EFA events. Uh, Kathleen, do you have anything to report? Didn't we have the visionary? The visionary theater? Haven't we? We want to talk about that or just Go ahead. say that, that well, I don't really know much about it, but they uh, they approached apparently through EFA and said they would like to be part of the programming for the arts nights. And yeah. well, everybody that I've heard of so far thinks it's a great idea. Yeah. Just to figure uh, out how to work it in. Right. Sorry, who was that? I, I guess contact uh, context. Uh, there, there's maybe a theater. There's a theater group that approached us that we might be able to work into the Encinitas Art Night upcoming. Uh, the ad hoc actually hasn't met to discuss that yet. We're meeting. Oh, tomorrow. sorry, sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> sorry, I, when you called it by its title, I wasn't sure what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> so, Vis visionary theater, you said. Isn't that the name of it? Isn't that what it was called? Visionary Theater? I do not recall off the top of my head. I do recall, it's a, it's a theater group that's interested in, in performing during mm -hmm. art night. And we have a, a short meeting tomorrow afternoon that will touch on that. Yeah. Uh, the theater group is called Ovation Theater. Ovation. Ovation. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess moving on then, assisting staff with uh, Americans for the Arts and Economic Prosperity. Um, I can report that I've collected a couple of um, Americans for the Arts um, surveys from the Lucadia Battle of the Bands that I run with Lucadia Main Street, and we'll be doing some more collecting of that. Um, at Summer Fun on the 101, which is the next Lucadia Main Street event. And um, let's see, I'll be handing those over to staff tomorrow, actually, so. Okay. I'll be happy to help you at Lucadia 101 at the Lucadia oh. Art Walk. Okay, cool. We got a volunteer, I'll put you down. <laughs> Colette, I did want to ask you a question. Is it possible for you guys, for the city to loan us an iPad for uh, to do the survey on? We do not have any that are available. Okay. So while that is, technically an option for collecting the surveys because we don't have that equipment available. We're not participating in that option. We just have the QR code version and then the paper copy version. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I should probably report this too, um, that nobody was really filling them out at all at the battle of the bands. And then, um, I, I talked it over with uh, some of the Main Street people and we decided to offer free stickers <laughs> and all of a sudden a bunch of people filled some out. So, <laughs> you know, if you, if you have an event you're running and you got free stuff to hand out for people's time, <laughs> that <always> helps. <laughs> um, I may have missed this. Is there a standing database of opportunities for us to help out with that collection process? Because I'd, I'd certainly like to be part of that, but I, sure. um, yeah, I wasn't sure where to look. We are oh. working on, on that, Connor. Our arts assistant has been working on putting that together. With okay. all of the other projects, we're still, you know, just kind of staying a little bit ahead of it. Um, yeah. As we approach the um, Broam on the 18th, and some other events. There's a lot going on this summer that we want to make sure that we capture. So it is my hope that by next week, we'll have at least the next few months out so that we can draw you in after <laughs> your participation as a volunteer. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for that information. All right. 
if uh, nobody else has anything else for uh, Americans for the Arts, we'll move on to number four, present an updated draft arts master plan. Do we have any updates on the master plan or progress to be reported on? No. Okay. Um, sure. Well, sure, Corral Schmidt. I can uh, sure. chime in on that. Um, so yeah. I had an opportunity to start reviewing the arts master plan. I did do an initial review probably about five or six months ago. Um, and one of the things that became apparent to me um, is that during the formation of the original arts master plan, there was significant public outreach. And so I've asked Colette mm -hmm. to schedule a meeting with the ad hoc because I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to incorporate public outreach into this process. Um, typically, if, a, if an arts policy like this is updated every five years, um, you can make some minor tweaks to it without really doing a total uh, public process. However, this document hasn't been looked at in 20 years. So I have some concerns uh, about bringing something forward to the city council at some point where we haven't done a due diligence on this um, community and yeah. public outreach. Yeah. So um, I'd like to talk with the group about strategies for that. And so Colette and I talked today during our one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we're going to schedule a meeting with the ad hoc committee in the next few weeks. That's a great idea because when we started working on this like five years ago, there was no budget for doing it. Mm -hmm. So I, we, we thought at the time that once we looked at the scope of it, we said, well, this is not the time to do public mm -hmm. outreach because we don't have anything to present to the public. Right. And, and so, Kathleen, so, our commissioner, it's a much better time to be doing public outreach, I think. Yeah. And Commissioner Lee, to be quite frank, um, we, we don't currently have a budget for this project either. Um, so we need to look at the different components of it. And if it does require maybe some consultant work or some type of survey, we'll have to look at um, funding for that and possibly funding that in the next budget cycle. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Director Carlin. You're welcome. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll move on to number five, support and advocate for the formation of County Arts Council as part of the County of San Diego. So I do have a letter that I've submitted for us to consider uh, an item 10. So we can talk about that then. Yeah, uh, Navardo, I'd love to uh chat with you about this. I, I reached out to the uh, to uh, Supervisor Lawson Reamer's office to get more information on where that proposal stands that they voted on last year and, and you know, how it's moving through the process. But um, um, because I, I'm not sure I know um, how close that is to, you know, actually being adopted or specifically how we can help. And you may uh, be able to fill me in on some of that. So we great if we could chat. No, definitely. I, th I think if this is not, this is just the beginning. We'll probably have to do more advocating later on just because, yeah. you know, the budget will be approved, but then there's still other steps in between that uh, probably we'll need advocating for. Sounds good. Okay. Second. All right. So, Number six, assist with the promotion of city arts and culture events. That is an ongoing need. And I'm working on getting that a little bit more streamlined so that it's something that I can, much like the that calendar of opportunities that um, Commissioner Bear was asking about for the arts and economic prosperity, I would like to develop that a similar kind of a thing for this so that I can put it out there and enlist your help. If each commissioner was able to help with a small chunk of it, it really does make a big difference in us getting things promoted widely. Okay. All right, I guess. If there's no further discussion of that one, we'll move on to number seven, research the feasibility for a program of hosted artist homestays. Uh, again, I'd love to touch base with Jeffrey about this. I, I've gotten as far as just reaching out to 
contacts at a couple of area theater companies that I know have, have instituted these programs at um, Moonlight in Vista and also uh, Signet down in San Diego. I think they had pre-pandemic anyway, pretty healthy um, artist uh, uh, stay programs where patrons and supporters of these companies would, um, would um, put up artists from out of town. So uh, just seeking some information from them on, on how, how they constructed that, how the process worked. And hopefully that'll be helpful for us to put our, put our own guidelines together. Yeah. And I, and this is Jeff. Um, it's an interesting discussion now in a public forum that because of the sort of rise and fall and expansion and contraction of pandemic controls for travel and public events, you know, there's two parts. One is exactly what you're saying is, is kind of the logistics and the other is the invitation. So, you know, in, as we talk about it in a public meeting, it's a little hard to, you know, to get too enthusiastic about it because we don't, it can't be an invitation until we are confident that the pandemic allows for traveling artists and musicians and the venues are open. But I do want to get into the research and get into the kind of examples of who's done it successfully. And I've talked to a lot of people on the, on the music side of it. I've done it myself at our home, but there's that hesitation about making a kind of a broad public invitation until we know that we can actually legitimately host people because of the pandemic. And also, I'm just going to throw out from a risk perspective, you'll have to look at who the overarching body of that program would be. It, right. it may not be something that we can necessarily do through the commission. So I'm curious to know how those other organizations did it and what that over oversight body was. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great question to ask. I'll add that to my list. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on then. Public art. Support the public art policy specific focus, including uh, the sculpture program, El Portal, Olympus, and the privately funded donor par uh, projects. So the uh, public question period closed on June 1. There were no questions for either El Portal or the sculpture installation program. So now we are looking at a July 15 submission deadline for proposals on both of those projects. I'm hoping that you are all sharing those links with as many mm -hmm. potential qualified artists as possible. All right, we'll be doing that. Um, moving on then, number nine, investigate feasibility of using outer spatial app to identify public art locations. Uh, no updates at the moment. All right, moving on to visual art. Assist with Art Night Encinitas pre-event planning at event volunteering. So I can update real quickly that I, I do have a really good bunch of uh, musicians that are going to be playing at the next one, although things have changed a little bit and I'll be updating the ad hoc uh, tomorrow about that. Um, still have a few puzzle pieces of acts uh, that might need to be rearranged, but uh, we did also get and that uh, theater group reach out to us that wants to perform. And it is my belief that we will have City Hall as a site that can participate in July. If you've been mm. able to, to be here, the, the courtyard concrete has been poured and, and things in that area seem to be moving along. I had a, a brief conversation with Matt here at the city and and he's really believing like July 23 is going to be a, a realistic expectation that we can hold art night here at City Hall. So that'll be great to be able to have all three of the city art spaces participating again. It's, it's been a bit since we've been able to enjoy that. Mm 
Uh, will the building be open? Yes. I mean, as usual, the lobby and, and into the art spaces, yes. Oh, okay. Just not public meetings? Not public. Well, I mean, this is all making a big assumption that by July 23, COVID will have subsided and that we will be oh, able okay. to. Obviously, okay. any number of things can happen between now and then to change that, but assuming that COVID can subside, construction will not be, is not anticipated to be an obstacle okay, okay. with having art night at City Hall. There may still be obstacles, it just won't there be There may still be obstacles, <laughs> right, right. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see, that was number 10, art night. Number 11, serve on visual art selection panel for 2023 art exhibitions. So probably nothing for that right now, right? Well, actually, oh, okay. um, on June 1, I released the application for the 2023 exhibitions. So I sent that out to everyone on my list. Oh, All of you great. should have received it, mm -hmm. I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. So please share that far and wide as well. So that is for two and three dimensional exhibitions at the city's three art spaces. The deadline for that is September 26. Hold on, let me just double check. Um, it's in September. And then after that, we will have the jurying, much like we've done in the past, except that it won't be that compressed uh, schedule like it was last year. September 29th at 4 o'clock p.m. is the deadline for visual art submission. And all of that information can be found on the city site encinitasca.gov forward slash visual art. Okay. Uh, I do have one thing to note here. Uh, it should be Michael uh, on the committee, not me anymore. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I will get that fixed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving to performing arts number 12. Support existing city performing arts programs and research feasibility of new offerings. I had a great conversation with Sadie with Litback. And we are in discussion for a program in summer 2023. Don't have enough details to share beyond that, but it was a really exciting conversation and it looks very promising. So I look forward to having organizing an ad hoc meeting with that group so that we can talk about other mm -hmm. programming possibilities. Great. Mm -hmm. That's such a terrific group. Lit back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on, City Present Fiscal Year 2023 Commission Work Plan Outcomes. Yeah, so that's not going to come until early next year. Yep. And present the proposed Commission Work Plan goals. All right. So pre with presenting the, wor the work plan goals, is that something we're ready to do now? No, <clears throat> excuse me. Both of those things happen at the end of your term. So, sorry, closed out a little early. So those are things that we will start talking about as it gets closer. So when this term ends, then you can look back at, at what has been accomplished and look at future. So as you look towards 23, 24 goals. So that's something that you probably don't need to start talking about until the end of this year. Okay. Then moving on to number nine informational items, we have the director's report from Director Carlin. Yes, thank you. Um, I just have a couple things to report, and I thought my 
the camera's been a little finicky. Um, so I just have a couple things to report. Um, first of all, we have um, closed our RFP, which is our request for proposal for um, Cottonwood Creek Park host. So I don't know how many of you know this or if I had announced this mm -hmm. at a previous meeting, but our Cottonwood Park host that we had for a number of years, Terry, passed away um, a little over a month ago. And so we, um, we definitely need a park host at that site to help keep eyes on the park and just support park operations over there. So that's closed and we had two candidates for that. So we'll be doing interviews this week for that position over at Cottonwood. Um, also, for those of you who have been keeping up on the budget, we are um, looking forward to taking the final proposed budget to the City Council on the 15th of June, where they'll be adopting the budget. Um, also, at that same meeting, we will be doing the community grant um, awarding of the organizations that were selected for the community grant program. And then the council will have an opportunity to also allocate some additional funding to those different organizations that applied. Um, we also have summer programs starting. So June, June is our big month where we have all of our beach programs starting, all of our summer camps um, as kids get out of school. Um, we also have a lot of programs for seniors and a, a dabbling of arts programs, which we want to see grow in the next two years so that we're ready to roll when, it, when Pacific View comes on. Um, and then in addition to that, um, I don't know how many of you know who Crystal Roth was, but she was our senior management analyst. And Crystal has been an instrumental part of our team for um, many years. And she actually just celebrated 15 years with, this, with our department. And um, she oversaw the entire admin um, division who does all of our permitting, um, supports our commissions, and makes sure that we have all of our ducks in a row when it comes into budget and, and everything. And um, also, you know, helps out with RFP process, everything. They're, um, so the admin team is very instrumental in what we do here. Um, so she actually retired on Friday. So we were very sad to see her go. Um, and so we are act actually actively recruiting for that position right now. Um, but in the meantime, I'm overseeing admin. So <laughs> I've been very busy um, in the department. Uh, I, will, I will be very busy in the department with um, overseeing admin until we get that position filled. Is, um, that, is, this, is it sudden that she retired? Um, she, I think she had it on her horizon. And a few weeks ago, you know, she said, I, I think I'm ready. And so she came to me and, and announced her retirement. Oh, okay. Well, you can hardly say no. Right. Well, we're very happy for her, but we're sad for us. Yeah, right. I can get <laughs> short notice for getting yeah. somebody to come in. And I have to say, she was she was always the go-to. She always had the answer and yeah. Yeah. knew the policy behind it and knows the municipal code like the back of her hand. So it's going to be a, some big shoes to fill. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Like Kathy Hollywood, if I'm ever in doubt about anything, I just call Kathy and she, yeah. if she doesn't, if she doesn't have the answer, she tells me who to call. Yes. Yeah. And that was my report. Okie doke. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Crystal. Um, we have item 9B, the cultural arts division report from arts administrator Murphy. So we've covered most of what's going on around here. A couple of, of other things that are going on in addition to the things that, that you all know about are the exhibitions. New exhibitions are going to be installed in all three city spaces the week of June 27th. So if you haven't already had a chance to go see all the work that's up, go see it. And I'm excited about what's coming in. I'm always excited about the new stuff coming in. And it's going to make for a really exciting art night in July. We don't meet as a commission in July. So definitely watch for all the, the promotion and I'll be sending out volunteer opportunities as we, as the ad hoc is meeting and we're filling in both entertainment and volunteer slots. Um, interestingly enough, it's happening on the same weekend as Comic-Con, which has presented a challenge for shuttles. We are looking at the Friends of the Encinitas Library is likely going to help us out in that regard this time. We are also working on Digital Muertos already. I know it seems far away, but it's not. And also, I know Kathleen will probably touch more on this in her EFA report, but we're been doing a lot of planning for the passport to Persian calligraphy and performance art that's happening at the community center on June 18th. 
And that is the end of my report. All right, thank you very much, Colette. Uh, so moving on, uh, and we're yeah moving on to commission calendar. I yes, see. those Wednesday concerts continue to fill up. I can't stress enough. Doors open at eleven thirty. If you want to make sure you have a seat, I suggest you get there. Library hours have changed, so we actually have a a queue that has to, to fill up outside the door. People line up outside the door. We open at 11.30 and, and let people in. And often the room is full by about 10 minutes to noon. We've got great music coming um, tomorrow. And I'm sorry, on Wednesday, we have Jacopo Giacopuzzi and his sister, Madalena. He played with Epalpity last year and I believe two I years that's prior. So familiar. Yes, he is a spectacular pianist. So mm -hmm. if you have an availability this Wednesday, it's going to be a really good performance. The last Music by the Sea performance for this season is on Friday, June 17th. There are still tickets available. And then, of course, we have EFA on June 18th. All right, so then moving on to the Encinitas Friends of the Arts report, Kathleen. Okay, well, I I was putting together a report and then I got an email from Naime <laughs> saying, oh, this is what we're up to. So she is uh, pleased to let us know that the EFA has received a grant from uh, of $30,000, which is to go toward administrative expenses, including hiring a professional grant writer. So that's a huge thing for us because that's one of the things we're gonna be doing is raising big bucks to uh, help support the, the building out of Pacific View. And uh, she also wanted, besides the um, Passport to Persian Calligraphy, which is on the 23rd, there is, um, we are planning a flea market or maker's market on July 23rd, and that is to be at Pacific View. So, and we uh, have two sponsors for that, Cal Coast Bank and the San Diego Art Guild. They're both going to help us financially and uh, also provide, um, provide uh, artists to be there. And something we discussed at our board meeting was that we thought it would be a wonderful idea if the city could have a booth there at our maker's market because it's at Pacific View with literature and answering questions for the public that's there about Pacific View and what's happening and maybe some of the plans about what it's going to look like when it's built out, stuff like that. But I'm sure that's something I may will talk about with you, Colette, and with whoever else needs to know about it. But that seems like a really good opportunity because this is going to be an opportunity for people to actually be on the property. And that hasn't happened for quite a while. So that's what we're up to. Naime is always frantically busy. Plus, she's doing a remodel on her house at the same time, if you can imagine. All right. Thank you, Kathleen. So number 10, are there any I think Irene, Irene had a comment. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah, Kathleen, it's really great that uh, there's going to be a grant writer for EFA. I can't quite hear uh, you. Yeah. Oh, you can't hear me? No. 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 Let me turn the volume up. Oh, now I can. Oh, that's better. That's whatever that is. That works. Yes. Okay, good. Well, my question was whether uh, I think it's great that um, EFA has a grant for a grant writer. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. One of the things we've talked about in the past that EFA maybe could think about doing would be um, to get a grant to get some money to pay for the performers on Wednesday. Well, we, yeah, that's what we're working on that. I'm supposed to be working on that, but I can't find anybody who's willing to, to, uh, give us money to help pay for that okay <laughs> it's, on, it's on our list of things we're working on that's great that would be really fantastic because now they just get donations as you know yes and um 
we actually committed to doing that, to donating the funds, and it's up to us to figure out how to raise the money. But the, the, we've already committed the funds to the city, right, Colette? You've committed for the Art Night Performers, yes. Yes. Is it twelve or $1,500? It varies depending oh, upon okay. who, how many members are, are in the organization. Mm -hmm. I know. But but I thought I thought we we committed a certain dollar amount. I just didn't remember what it was. It's it instead of being seventy five dollars per act, it's seventy five dollars per performer. Right. So and then it topped out at four performers in a band. So if there was to be a band that had five, it would still only be three hundred dollars. And then I check in with Naime in terms of budgeting because there is a limited amount of funds available right now. Mm -hmm. The police grant did not come through. Mm -hmm. But we are working on, um, that's one of the things our new grant, grant writer will work on. Kathleen, this is uh, James. Did, did mm -hmm. they, do you know where that grant for EFA came from? That $30,000 grant seems like a great development, but I was just curious. Uh, let me see. It does not say where it came from. Private foundation. Okay. Mm. Thank you. All right. Okay. So uh, moving on then from the EFA item. I think we're going into commission member initiated items. Are there any? So yes, I do have a letter of support to send to the uh, mm -hmm. county uh, supervisors. And oh. you know, this has been going on for like uh, the last five, six, eight months. And you know, they voted on it, on it in on, in August to, to study the formation of an office that supports the arts and culture uh, at a county level. And then in November, they released a report, internal report. And uh, so now it's it's going to be part of the budgeting process. So on June 28th, mm -hmm. the county supervisors are going to deliberate, you know, funding for the Office of uh, Economic Development and Government Affairs, which will uh, host a unit inside that will deal with arts and culture initiatives in the county. So. I went to the budget meeting uh, with District 3 on May 23rd, and that was uh, Supervisor uh, Lawson Reamer. And, you know, I was, uh, they, they gave an overview of the budget. And then they also mentioned the, the 3.6 million budget for the office. And then I reached out to, to, to her staff and her office, and I also reached out to Nora Vargas and so yes, the 3.6 million budget is for the whole office. They didn't specify how much exactly will be allotted for arts and cultures initiative, but they did confirm that one full-time staff will be dedicated uh, to those initiatives uh, out of three. And they also mentioned like if that one staff person needs assistance, there's other two people who can help with uh, with uh, arts and culture initiatives. And uh, I think, you know, it'd be, Good for our commission to you know give a support mm -hmm. to that because mm -hmm. it, it's not going to only affect uh, help us but it's going to help other cities in the county who gonna, don't necessarily have the the fun the funding and the budget to you know have administrative support for their initiatives. Mm -hmm. It it gives a format for everyone to operate under and around. Let, let me know what you need me to scroll through. I don't know oh, yeah. if so, you've all been able to read the attachments or not. So just tell me where you need me to have that be on screen.
Okay, if most people had an opportunity to uh, reread through that? Yes. No? Okay. Um, do we need a motion to um, sign all of our names to it? I have, a, I have a couple of comments to make. One is on the... Wait a minute. I'm on the wrong page. <clears throat> on the on the second paragraph, it says arts cultural organizations within the unincorporated areas. Counties fall within the regions. Arts committee. Okay. Okay, reading it again, I was thinking that kind of negated out organ places like Sandy, like Encinitas, where we actually have arts and cultural organizations, but it doesn't. It just points out that that's, and um, the, the very last sentence, we hope the EDGA unit focused on arts grows. I would say we look forward to watching it grow or being a part of it growing because uh, the word hope to me just is kind of empty. Okay, yeah. I'd like it to be a little bit more, uh, more of a statement than a wish. Uh, other than that, I, I'm happy to sign on. So what would you propose then? Uh, what would you say? How would you rephrase it? Um, I don't know. Do we hmm. want to to volunteer to be part of the process of, or or just um, we anticipate, or we look forward to? How about we look forward to? How about we can change that to? Uh, we look forward to the EDGA unit focused. Is that is that good? <clears throat> Maybe you could say we look forward to seeing the. EDGA unit uh, focused on arts and culture initiatives grow and expand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Are there any other comments, questions, suggested edits? Okay. Michael, or, I'm sorry, Colette, could you scroll up one more time? I just want to eyeball that first part one more. Sorry about that. I know we had a lot of time to read it. But. That's okay. It looks, it looks good. Commissioner Valenzuela, I really appreciate your uh, doing this. Yes, definitely. Thumbs up. Good job. Okay. So does somebody need to make a motion? I will make a motion that uh, the Commission for the Arts uh, signs and sends this letter with the suggested edits. And just to confirm the edits, uh, I'm going to reread the, the sentence. Let's see here. Uh, we look forward to seeing the EDGA unit focused on arts and culture initiatives grow and expand, correct? Is that what, is that what, mm -hmm. you're okay with that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so this was Michael uh, Krell Schmidt making a motion to uh, have the Commission for the Arts sign this letter and send it through with the edits, of course. I would second it. All right, I'll call for the vote. Uh, if you hear your name and are in favor with the changes as discussed, say aye. Uh, Commissioner Carla Schmidt? Aye. Commissioner Valenzuela? Aye. Commissioner Redlitz? Aye. Commissioner Abraham? Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Lees? Aye. Commissioner Hebert? Aye. All right, let the record show it passes six to zero with Commissioner Dilly being absent. Great. Okay, let's see. Oh no, where did my agenda go? Back to it. Okay. 
So yes, thank you, Navardo, for putting that together for, uh, for the commission. Um, do we have any future agenda items added by commission members? No. I do. I have a. I have a question. Uh, uh, so, uh, Michael, uh, do you want to send the letter? Is that uh, on our behalf, or would it this be a staff uh, situation? Good question. <laughs> I guess I'm going to send the letter then. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, I'll prep it for you, and then you can just send off. Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay. So, future agenda items are none. By commission members. So moving on to any commissioners' reports. I have. Um, can you hear me? This is Irene. Yes, we can hear you now. Or I can. Um, I just have something I wanted to bring to the attention of the commission. Since we're getting into a period where we're going to be um, approving some more public art for the for the city, and it's a really exciting time for us. Um, a, a while ago, I went on the tour of the murals of La Jolla. Um, and I think if any of the commission members who are interested in the public art here, this would be really a valuable tour for them to partake of. It's every, the last Wednesday of every month, it's run out of the La Jolla Anthenaeum, starts at 5.30. And uh, they just take a group of people and go around and look at all the um, the murals that are up through the program that's um, run in La Jolla, and um, they uh, the murals change every. I'm not sure if they change every year. They have about I don't know, maybe uh, five to ten of them, and I just wanted to bring that to the attention of of, of the group. I think it would be really worthwhile to get an idea of what kind of um, possibilities there are for public art. What's some of your favorite stuff in La Jolla? Well, I'm looking at, uh, you know, it, there was one um, that I remember uh, of the tour that I went on where they had something by Beatrice Milhaz, who was a, she's an artist from um, Brazil. And a beautiful kind of collage painting that she did on one of the walls. So there's a lot of, um, and they get, they get um, you know, a lot of interesting um, ideas, different kinds of art that I think are very and they, interesting. Is it a program they have that they change them out every year or so? Yes, it's actually a private um, group that, that uh, funds this. And they get, they do get internationally known artists who submit proposals and they, uh, either the artist puts them up themselves or they get somebody else to put them up on these, you know, really large walls. Hmm. And, um, but the tours are free and they're open to anybody who wants to go. Very cool. Thank you for letting us know about that. You're welcome. Do we have any other commissioner reports to report? Okay, well, I guess then uh, we're fine to adjourn this meeting of the Commission for the Arts at 6 p.m. <laughs>